Hey there, it's Pete with GCI Turf. I hope you're having a great day today. I want to welcome you out here to my home. And I've got some work I need to do in my beds and to my trees, especially my crepe myrtle. So what I'm doing this video is a couple of different things. Try to wrap it all up in one. It's like I got a new spreader I want to show you. Uh, that for folks that have larger bedded areas, heck, you can even use it for a small yard. I tried making a video the other night putting that fertilizer and it was almost dark. The video was a flop, so I had to redo the fertilizer application with this spreader uh, uh, in another month or so. A little later, that way I can show you how to do it with fertilizer. But I tried, you know, I was working late and didn't get off in time. Got home rushed, tried to make a video and it was a flop but we got some good sunshine today so i'm going to apply snapshot uh, which is a, a pre-emergent that goes in your bedded areas your natural areas completely safe for trees bushes shrubs there's a humongous list on the label of the plants that it is safe for now i do want to say this on the label specifically it says it is not recommended for turf grass okay and it also says right up under there that it, it if you happen to get a little bit into turf there's no need to freak out because a lot of the turf uh, types are tolerant to it so with that said you want to be cautious not getting any in your grass but at the same time the label does say that if you do you know it's it you know it's not probably not going to hurt anything now i got two different products for you today one snapshot it comes in a 50 pound bag the other one's called crew c-r-e-w it comes in a 10 pound bag gonna do about the same thing but the 10 pound bag would be for folks that have smaller beds say like you know if you just had one bed right in front of your house like this and maybe a little one here and there and you don't want a big old 50 pound bag and then the other one the snapshot is going to really be for folks like me who have a whole lot of natural area and you want the best bang for your buck and something else i'm going to do is my crate models you know i got several of them around here and they're notorious for japanese beetles coming and just attacking them tearing the leaves all to pieces eat, eating all the leaves off the tree can't stand it drives me crazy so i will typically apply some imidacloprid uh, soak it into the root zone, let the tree take it up, bug comes by, bites it, takes care of things. So you can look at that as kind of like a preventative type measure uh, to help protect your crepe myrtles and, and any other tree really that Japanese beetles in particular, uh, that's, who I'm, that's my main culprit who I'm going after. Uh, you know, they, they, those things wreak havoc on trees. I mean, uh, uh, all kinds of different trees that they'll just, they'll get on, tear them up. And something else I'm going to do with my crate myrtles is going to feed them and get that part of the program going. And typically, I'll put down floor green, water it into the plant, let the plant take it up and do its thing. But I've had a whole lot of folks ask me, hey, I got some leftover green pop from what I use from aerating seeding and I don't really have enough to save it and treat the entire yard and I don't want to go buy another. And then, you know, sometimes when you use what you have in a gallon, you know, there's not quite enough left in there to do another full application on the yard. It's just simple math. Sometimes it works out that way. Well, I'm in the same boat. I've got, I don't know, 15, 20 ounces of green pop there's no way I can you know, treat my yard with that little amount. So I'm going to mix it right in my hose-in sprayer with the uh, midocloprid, and I'm going to soak all that into the tree. That way I ain't knock out two birds with one stone, right? So and I've got two spreaders. I've got a new belly spreader. I've kind of hooked up with Earthway in a way, and they sent me a few spreaders to try out, and I want to show you how to use them. And this one's a belly spreader. Okay, sometimes in your natural areas, it's hard to get out there and push a push spreader. Uh, you got stuff in the way. So this spreader mounts to your belly straps on, and I'm going to show you how to use it and, and apply the material so that you can be confident that you put the right amount of product on the right area. And then for little beds and little small places, I've got this little handheld shaker. I've been using these things for years and years and absolutely love them. Tight areas, small spots, you don't really need a big spreader and you still want to get that product spread out evenly. I'm going to show you this spreader and how it works. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna link all this stuff up in the description below. It'll all be there if you wanna check it out. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break my beds up into two sections. Y'all know I got this one big bed that goes this way and I got one other big bed that goes down that way. And what I need to do is get a square footage on it. Length times width. Very simple to do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So roughly seven paces, seven times three, because I roughly move three feet in a pace, that's 21 foot depth. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, four, six, nine, five, nine, nine, four, six, eight, four, four, five, 46. 46 times three, 138, and then 138 times the 21 depth, 2,898. So we're gonna call that 3,000 square feet. So this whole section of bed down through here to the end, 3,000 square feet, let's go fill up a spreader. And that handle right there is what turns the impeller. Now over here's the gate, and what you'll do is you'll take your hand and push this lever forward, and that's what opens the gate and lets the, the material fall down to the impeller and spread it. Now, since I haven't formally calibrated this, it's real simple. There's a little stop knob right here. I'm gonna go way back down here to a very low setting, somewhere down around a five. It goes from five down here up to 30 up here. So I'm gonna start at a real, real low setting. The reason I'm doing that is I don't wanna go out here and just dump all the product out in one area. I wanna put light coats on, even if I have to go over the entire 3,000 square foot two or three times, my main goal is to evenly apply this product right here to that 3,000 square feet. You got these two straps right here, you grab, hop it up and give it a good pull and that's tight to me. Now, here's you something I don't want you to do. I don't want you to get out here and get ready and be ready to spread and open the gate and then start turning. No, 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 don't do that, okay? But instead, when you get to where you're ready to make your application, I want you to start spinning the wheel first then open the gate. The reason for that is you open the gate, this stuff starts immediately pouring out and you turn the wheel and you're gonna whoo, dump a big glob right in one area. If you have the wheel spinning first, and as you open the gate, when the material hits the whirly bird, it automatically starts spreading it out. And at that same point in time, you wanna go and start making your move forward, start moving in a forward direction. That way you can start applying. All right, so you see right here, I got it spinning. Then I'm gonna open it up and just start walking. Now when I get right here to my tree, I don't wanna stay facing square, okay? I don't mind getting up under the tree because it's okay. But what I don't wanna do is throw this snapshot all the way out in my grass. So it's a real simple fix for that. I'm gonna watch this coming out of the left side and it's gonna kind of throw out at an angle about like this. And I'm gonna physically watch that line, the outside line of it. And I'm gonna turn my body just a little bit so that that outside line lines up with where my grass meets my natural area. And so I'll kind of make a sideways pace. And then as I get here, I'll move over just a little bit and square back up. Holy cow. You got to see this, man. Look at all this. Look at that. Good day in the morning. Mm. So, as I was saying before the pollen attacked me, I'll get back right here and square back up and slide over just a little bit and then continue spreading forward. And I'll do that every time I get to a tree. Something else you want to remember is on your whirly bird, the rotations per minute, you ain't got to count them and get it dialed in that close. Just make sure you're consistent with your spreading speed, okay? You don't wanna go really, really slow on one pass and really, really fast on the other. Get a good rhythm going and stick with it. Pretty much doing this just like I would spreading uh, fertilizer on the yard with a push spreader. Obviously, I don't have any tire tracks to go by, so I'm visualizing everything. I know how far I'm spreading my 
snapshot so I have a visual mental image of a line right here that's kind of painted pick a color we'll call it Tar Heel Blue right I've got a Tar Heel Blue line right here of coverage that I've mentally put in my head and I know that when I come down through here all this Tar Heel Blue area has been covered and so when I get over here and slide over a little bit, when I get back to my edge, I'm washing this side over here, throw back to my Tar Heel blue line right there. So I went over the whole area one time on a setting five and I had considerably more than half of the material left in the bucket. So I opened up to an eight, went over the entire area again and that put me almost empty. I'm, I'm almost completely out. So what that's telling me is maybe when I do this bed over here, I can start off on a setting nine, 10 or so, and go with that and see how that works. Because what, what I'm trying to do is at the end of the day, I'm trying to get it set on the, the spreader setting up so I can make one pass down through there and I'm done. Okay, that's the end of the day. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to come out here and go over this bed 37 times each time. Okay, that's not the point. As long as you're making an even application, even distribution over the area, it's good to go over the area one time and be done. Saves time. That's the whole point of calibrating. Well, one of the points, but that's a really good point on calibrating, you know what I'm saying? I'll, I'll make mental notes and I'll write it down in my phone. And when I do these again in 60 days, I'll know where to start, you know, with my spreader setting. Now the crew, it basically covers, uh, I haven't actually went through and read every single one, but you can look right here on the list right here. All those trees, it's safe to use on, shrubs safe to use on more shrubs more shrubs more shrubs ground covers perennials ground cover perennial and then when you get right here turf grass use now this is pretty interesting right here crew provides season-long control of crabgrass and control or suppression of other listed annual grasses and broadleaf weeds in established lawn and ornamental turf grass turf grass and sport golf course fairway aprons rough tees tee boxes campgrounds parks recreation crew will prevent the germination of annual bluegrass poa annua <laughs> Boy. Crew may be applied at a single application or as a split application in the spring, summer, or fall. So, of course, you'll need to come in and read the whole label if you want to. You can pull it up on the internet and read the label. But uh, this controls annual bluegrass, poa annua. That really gets my attention uh, because I do get a little tiny bit out there around the edges right along the road and that basically blows over from the neighbors who don't do anything and that's completely cool uh I, i'm probably going to try some of this this fall and i need to read up and see how it affects your seeding and when you when you're you, when you can do your air rate and seeding based off after your application blah 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 that kind of thing so i'll have to read up on all that and we'll do another video about that in the summertime and get you prepared for that if that's something you want to do so i've got a little strip of about eight inches between my sidewalk and my cephalotaxis and i want to apply some pre-emergent there be very very difficult to do that with that other spreader because i'm limited on my space i can work so i like these little hand applicators right here it's got this tube that comes out nice little fan pattern prongs right here this will be pointed down as you're spreading the material comes out hits this middle prong distributes through these three prongs right here and creates a little miniature fan pattern so i've got my product weighed out for this area let's get it I'm gonna get this material up under this tree. I can kind of toss it up under there a little bit like that. Or I can kind of come right here and go over the top. Now here's a word of warning. If you're gonna go over the top with it like this, I don't want you to dare do this when this tree is wet. It needs to be bone dry, 
super dry that way if the granular hits anything it'll fall off and make its way to the ground you may even want to get in here and give it a little shake make sure everything's knocked off of it you don't want that herbicide sitting on the tree and if it's wet if the tree's wet this stuff will stick to the tree that's big time no-no now we're going to start working on the bugs and another cool thing about this is i forgot to mention this earlier but aphids holy cow aphids wreak havoc on crepe myrtles this is a good defense against that it'll take forever to go over this but you the way you measure a tree is diameter at breast height and it's the circumference of the tree and then you do the math by the rate to the bug that you're trying to control what i do with my hose and sprayers i put me a little water in it first okay then i'll go and put my insecticide in there that i'm going to use then i'll go and put my fertilizer in there last Give it a good shake. Now what I did over there is I've got three trees that are basically the same size. So they're going to require the same amount of product for each one. So I multiplied my application times three, put it all in one jug. And I'm using roughly a third of the jug per tree. Because as this thing's pushing water out and sucking material out, you can watch it go down. This way I'm saving a little time. I ain't got to do each tree individually. And of course, this is a good time if you play games on your phone, you can pull your phone out and play a game while you're waiting. You know something else you could do? You could pull your phone out and go to GCI Turf Services YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button. That'd also be something cool you could do. <laughs> I'd throw that in there, you know what I mean? And I'm on my last one right here, so I'll go around and do my other trees i got around here that i'm concerned about that you know my jap maples they typically deal with some uh beetles and stuff like that definitely the crepe myrtles on beetles and aphids so this right here is just going to give me another good line of defense against all that man you don't want to have your trees all eat up by a bunch of bugs do you so i got my pre-emergent down get my trees fertilized they're ready to wake up and again right as they start blooming i'll hit them again real hard with the fertilizer and man, them jokers, they'll go crazy. They will be loaded with blooms. So hey, again, I'll link all this up in the description. You can check it out if you want to. I appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch. I'll check you later. Here's your little quick tip now. You can't ever get every last drop out of that jug. So it's just a little tiny bit right there. I'm gonna pour it out, rinse it into the tree because I know this is completely safe for this tree. I'm gonna take my water hose while I got it out here. Put some water in my jug. I'm gonna rinse it out right here around the tree. Once I get it rinsed out like I want it, I'm gonna put some more water in it. Stick my tube back down in the jug like that and let it suck that clean water through there. Now look at there. My jug's clean and ready for the next time. My tube's clean, ready for the next time. I can put it up in my garage. I'm ready for the next go round. Check it later.